032 Conversations is sponsored by Cube Gallery, the premier art space in Cebu City, focused on showcasing contemporary art. Established in 2013, Cube Gallery has been working hand-in-hand with artists to bring artistic visions and diverse forms of creativity to life. Coming up next at Cube is an exhibition called Instant. Capital I N by French artist Camille Thibert. Yeah, I had to uh, Google how to pronounce that. The exhibit is a collection of portraits made using a unique drilling technique on reclaimed wood. Thibert evokes a discussion on impermanence and vulnerability. The drilling, while necessary to her art form, is also a meditation on human nature in the hopes of encouraging viewers to pursue a more respectful and conscious way of life. I've seen some of the portraits online at the Cube Gallery Facebook page, and they look pretty compelling. I'd be interested to see what this looks in person. By the time you listen to this uh, podcast, I believe that the portraits should be in the foyer area of Cube Gallery. So visit and have a look in person. I'm I'm curious to see it myself. So for more information, you can send an email to info at cubegallery.ph or send a message to their Facebook page at Cube Gallery. All right. This podcast is also sponsored by Advenient, a digital marketing firm that has recently expanded to operations to include European clients. It's run by a good friend of mine, Khalil Corazo. A little bit of trivia. Khalil was featured in the very first episode of 032 Conversations. He's one of the smartest people I know. And they're hiring. Yep, Advenient is hiring. They are looking for junior marketing technologists. If you are a techie with a creative streak, and you'd like to explore the world of marketing technology, send Khalil a message at 032 at corazo.org. That's how he knows that uh, we sent you. That's the numbers 032. So the number 0, the number 3, the number 2 at C-O-R-A-Z-O dot O-R-G. For whatever reason, you don't know what 032 at corazo.org looks like. I'll also include the email in the show notes. So if you're looking for an interesting job in marketing, maybe dealing with uh, European clients. I heard a lot of good feedback about about his clients too. They seem to be good clients. There's such a thing as bad clients and good clients. And there's good clients, man. They're very important. Send him, a, send him an email, 032 at Corazo. Dot org. Let's get to the show. Welcome to 032 Conversations, the podcast where we talk to creatives, see how they live, and how they do their work. I'm your host, Carlo Villarica. I am still nursing a sprained ankle. Yep, it's... It's been about a week now. It's a bit diff- like the first day or two. I, I needed a almost a crutch of sort, like a stick or whatever, an umbrella to just walk properly. And it sucks to walk. But one thing I discovered over the weekend was that I can still get on my bicycle, which I really enjoy. And then I knew that I could get on my bicycle. Uh, going on the flats and going like slow at a leisurely pace. I wasn't sure if I could put in a real effort on the bike. And then I discovered over the weekend, because I tried going up, if you're on a bike, if you like cycling here in Cebu, there's a, there's a little stretch there up in um, Budlaan. And then and then uh, up in Budlaan, there's that stretch that connects to that connects to uh, the Cebu Trans Central Highway. Basically, it connects up to Busay, and then it's a two kilometer stretch with a heat with like ridiculously uh, steep roads, and it's one of the harder uh, roads that I've gone through here in Cebu, and I've never 
I've never tried going through that road without stopping. And then I was going up and I was, I was thinking, you know, I feel pretty good and my foot doesn't hurt. So I just did it. And then it was really hard. It was a really hard effort. And, you know, my lungs were killing me. My legs were killing me. But you know what wasn't killing me? My sprained ankle. So that was surprising because considering that I have a hard time walking, but I can still get on a bike and put in an honest-to-goodness hard effort, even with a sprained ankle, you know, speaks. It's made me rethink a lot about what exercises I prefer to do. The nice thing with a bike is that really there's no impact. Unless you get hit by a car, then, you know, that's pretty heavy impact. But try not to get hit by a car. So, yeah, I'm just amazed about how there isn't any pressure on my foot when I bike. It's, it's, um, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're nursing bad knees, I'm not a doctor or, you know, don't take my advice. But wow, getting on a bicycle seems to seems to do wonders. And then the nice thing was I was, I was able to get my ankle to move without it hurting. And all, all, all good things, all good things. In this episode of 032 Conversations, I experienced a couple of firsts. This is the first time I interviewed three people all at once. Uh, personally, I would prefer I prefer interviewing one person. It's just easier to focus on one person and get to their to the meat of their story. But it was still fun to have a three person conversation and just get ideas rolling and get. Uh, well, you'll see. You'll see when you listen to the to the. To the to the interview. And then this is also the first time I interviewed uh guys who are basically from Manila. They're well they're based there. And they they spoke mostly in Tagalog. And people who know me might laugh because my my Tagalog is really bad. I know I spent like I spent like four years in college in Manila. But it was in the dorm, in the dormitory where my Dormates were mostly Visaya or basically from, you know, different areas in the Visayas. So I did not hone my Tagalog at all while, while in Manila. But it was really good to speak to them. I spoke to Reen Barrera, Mr. S, or he's also known as Mr. Sasquatch, and Terence Eduarte. These are three really talented and hardworking artists from Manila and they are currently exhibiting in Cube Gallery. Most likely if you're listening to this podcast in May 2019, their works are still in Cube Gallery. So again, go visit. They're they are full time artists. And I was curious to see, number one, what is it like? What is what is the art scene, art the art community like in Manila? What is it like to live as an artist there? And then I was also particularly curious as to how they made the switch from having a a job, a real job, a nine to five job. Like two of them were from advertising, and uh, Rian was uh, a sculptor. <laughs> you know that was his job. And then so how did they transition from having a, a job to having a life in art? So they're they're. So I talked a lot about that. They shared their story. And uh, Rian, Terrence, Japoy, thank you so much for sharing your story with me. I hope to see you guys in the future. Maybe if I visit Manila one of these days. And uh, maybe even talk one-on-one. Huh? Maybe have an interview one-on-one in the future. Who knows? But before we get to the interview, if this is your first time to listen to 032 Conversations, please subscribe we're on Spotify, we're on iTunes, we're anywhere, anywhere you can find podcasts. Subscribe. We have a new episode every Tuesday. Let's get to the episode. Solid na meal naman, kompleto na. Oh yeah? Okay. Uh, there's three of us here. Can, uh, Rin, can you state your name and then just pass the mic? State your name and what you do. Uh, I'm Rin Barrera. I do sculptures at paintings. And automata yung mga gumagalaw na sculpture. Uh, I'm Terence. Uh, I paint also. And I 
used to work in advertising, but now I just paint. It's cool. Uh, I'm Mark Jeffrey Santos, also known as Mr. S. Uh, I'm a painter and uh, nagtatry mag-sculpt. So, yan. Yeah, but, uh, so you guys are here in Cebu, in Cube, for the this camping trip, right? Yes. And then... This is going to be the tricky thing when there's three people. Because mm. I wanted to start with like how you got into uh, art. But I'm sure like all three of you have a different story with how you guys got into art, no? So I don't know. But let, let's 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 uh, get into it. Let's see. How how did you get into art, Rin? Um, nagtapos ako ng fine arts sa Far Eastern University sa may Recto Manila. Uh, dapat mag-nursing ako pero ang ang in-enroll ko fine arts na, naalaman na lang ng uh, airpad ko nung bumibili na ako ng art materials kasi OFW yung airpad ko kaya basta nagbayad lang siya ng tuition fee so ayun nagtuloy-tuloy na naging artist tapos pagka-graduate ko uh, gusto ko sana mag-advertising pero nalinya ako sa ano eh, sa mga sculptural works kumaga naging assistant ako sa mga sculptor sa Cubao sa ano yung mga gumagawa na santo so doon nagtuloy-tuloy na naging sculptor na talaga ako sculptor tas eventually naging painter na rin nagpe-paint na rin Ay, so he started as a sculptor first uh, um well ang gusto ko sana maging painter kasi yun yung mga nakikita ko sa paligid ko nung sa FEU days ko ba pero doon ako dinala ng ano eh ng ng pagkakataon kumbaga uh, may nag-offer na kung gusto mo ba maging assistant sa ganto sa ganyan tas puro sculptural tas yung first job ko uh, sculpture din so parang doon ako dinadala kahit ayo ko pero hindi gusto ko naman art pa rin kasi naman siya ayun mm, sige sige let's well This is the tricky thing again. So uh, I would normally just dive into that. But uh, Terence, let's get to you, bae. Paano ba? So I guess, nung bata ako, I really started getting into art. Because I remember, hindi ako makabili ng magic cards. Oh, magic I love magic cards, the gathering yeah. cards. I, I loved playing it, but it, it cost a lot. Yeah. So me and my brother we decided to make our own cards. So, kami nagdraw ng art and then kami rin, we used to get off a lot. Uh, parang ang dami namin disagreements just because kami naglalagay ng details. So, I always make mine stronger and then may kita niya and then he will revise his and then he will, he will make his, his stronger. Uh, so, parang, I guess yun yung start among other things. And then, that led me to going to fine arts sa uh, UST. So uh, mm. I was in UST advertising College of Fine Arts and Design, and then after graduating, started my job as a primer group of company. So it, it's a retail company. Then after one year, I moved into advertising. So that's like four to five years of my life. So akala ko yun na yung yun na yung trajectory ko. I think I was doing pretty well in advertising. Were you like a graphic designer or no? I was. I was there. I started as an art director, and then my last stint was an associate creative director. But I got tired. Parang there's so much overthinking because it's advertising. It's stressful. Uh, yes. Parang and daming details na I feel like we shouldn't be really Worrying diving about into it, one. but we we do, and it sucks. Like, parang contrary. To what, how I feel when I'm in my studio painting, doing this stuff, and I'm just free, not thinking about anything. I'm not thinking about the client. I'm not thinking about whether how the consumer will feel. So, it's, but I was just really freeing for me. So I guess that's why I'm here now. Mm. You know, I remember Magic the Gathering. They had beautiful. They, they did, yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah, I can't, yeah. I'm blanking on some of the artists' names. I had a few favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these the old. I don't know how old you guys yeah. are, but I, 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 I grew. I was, I was in high school in the nineties, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. so Magic the Gather. I, I, I remember playing a lot of yeah. Magic. The I don't Gather. remember the artist's name because I was too young to actually. Parang 
pagbata ka kasi you surface you don't really get into mm. who made this it's more of what what it is so parang ang naalala ko gusto ko yung mga cleric yung mga outfit uh, ng mga uh, cleric na <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay eh. sige uh, uh, Jeff Way how about you how about you bye how, what did you um nag nag start ako nung ano eh uh, de simula tayo sa college nag aral ako ng multimedia arts and sciences sa uh, Mapua Institute of Technology and then uh, ang pinag-aralan ko doon ang gusto ko talaga doon kasi gusto ko maging an- animator so nag 3D animation ako ganyan video productions And then, after graduating, uh, nag-try ako mag-apply sa isang production company. Tapos, sabi nila, ano, parang natakot ako kasi sabi nila, parang ano dito ah, walang tulogan dito, hindi ka uuwi dito for ilang days. Ah. It's so, like advertising, di ba? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's parang, since then, nung narinig ko yun, parang hindi na ako bumalik kasi ayoko nung ganung lifestyle. Ano, you just didn't so, show up na or <laughs> uh, tinray ko mag gumawa nung ano nung application test nila pero hindi ko na rin tinuloy. Mm. And then nag-end up ako sa advertising agency. Nagtrabaho ako as a uh, graphic artist. Yeah. So hindi hindi rin siya naging okay kasi yung environment ko doon naging ano medyo toxic na parang Laging OT, hindi ka natutulog, umaga ka na uuwi. So, so, tapos yung ginagawa mo dun, parang hindi pa fulfilling kasi hindi mo, parang hindi mo trip yung ginagawa mo. That's, a, that's interesting, no? Like, mm. at, at least <clears throat> people think of, if you're doing art and then they think, oh, it's really hard. Mm. But in a way, it's choosing your lifestyle also. Mm, yeah, yeah. Diba? I'd like to. Anyway, what you were saying, I, I'm sorry, I cut you uh, off. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Um, tapos, after nun, yun, nag-resign na ako. Tapos, naisip ko, eh, mahilig naman talaga ako mag-drawing since I was little. So, so naisip ko, doon na lang ako mag-focus. Tapos, until yung girlfriend ko, nag-work siya sa isang gallery. Tapos, na, at that time, nagpe-paint na talaga ako. So, parang pinas binigyan niya ako ng slot doon sa gallery na yun na makapag solo show tas you know are there yeah. a lot of galleries in manila mm yeah yeah a lot? super dami as in <laughs> oh, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> really like every month pero, pero i was i like i like to try to go back a little we'll try to go back a little bit to that idea that you know if you choose to be an artist Because I remember, for example, I mentioned off mic. I used to be a musician, but you know, when you're a musician here in Cebu, I can. I still had a day job. I still did stuff during the day, and then at night, I'd play gigs with my friends. And then, really, I looked at it as that was my uh, my Tagalog is really bad. So I'm going. That's my lag. That was my like pang gimmick, no. And then, but it was really fun. But when I would ever think about Sometimes I would daydream about being a full-time musician. And in my head at the time, it's maybe like 10 years ago, I couldn't see I couldn't see it. I just couldn't see the the future for me personally, no? But you guys like uh you just mentioned you had like full-time jobs and then the jobs were in a way yeah. Yeah. toxic, no? And in in that sense, being an artist, it was a, it was also a choice, a, a certain lifestyle, deba. Right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Can we can we talk about that? So like, uh, what what is it? Obviously, do you still have like a time in? Is there a time in also? Ah, uh, y- yun yung gusto ko dani, kasi ah uh, wala ang sinusunod na schedule. Ah, uh, magwork ka lang kung kailan mo gusto. Pero kailangan disciplined ka rin sa, sa work ethics mo. Kasi, syempre, work pa rin siya, business pa rin siya. Yeah, because yeah. there has to be output. Oh, pero wala kang sinusunod na parang boss na... Oh, yeah. but how do you, how do you, how do you, 
balance that because sometimes you know you wake up and then you just feel like I don't want to do anything today. What if I just want to, you know, binge on Game of Thrones so that I can see? <laughs> yeah. uh, for me, I, I think I'm speaking in behalf of everyone. Sa pag sinabi ko na, I guess we, kami, we're just fortunate enough na in Manila, right now, as in, as of this moment, kaya niya nang isupport kami. Y- kasi if, Like, if it was me, tapos nakita ko na being an artist won't really support myself and quote-unquote magiging starving artist ako, I would have not left my job. So, I guess, pasok lang yung timing for me na ngayon na nag-decide na ako na I wanna do this. Sakto na. There's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of galleries. And merong money coming in while doing what you love. So, yun yung yun yung pinaka factor for me what what pushed me to actually leave my day job and pursue this was it was it was there a time before like in Manila where um you know it there there wasn't the opportunity as an artist wasn't really there or has it always been would you know I don't know I think <laughs> uh, ano eh, uh, sobrang yung time kasi na naging uh, artist kami, hindi naman magkakalayo yung year. Uh, do- yun kasi yung time na nagbo-boom yung art sa uh, Philippines, pero in particular sa Manila. Uh, sobrang daming galleries. So, kahit anong style mo, mer- meron, meron at meron papasukan yung yung gawa mo. Na, sobrang swerte namin na nung time na nag-start kami mag-art, Sum, uh, kumbaga, sumabay sa karir namin yung pagsigla ng art sa Manila. Kumbaga, yung mga collector, bumibili na talaga ng mga young artist. Hindi na siya kulong sa pagbili lang ng mga may pangalan sa mga patay at mga... <laughs> yung mga, kumbaga, yung mga... There's... Mga nauna. But there was also that, like, old... Like, right now, there's a... For me personally, I like I I like like the contemporary like this new. I'm gonna I'm gonna botch a lot of these these genres, but this Singilang. new style of uh, art where you can tell like it's obviously a young person doing, yeah. it. and then you have that like really old style where like, uh, you know, it's farming, yeah, it's a uh, bahay kubo mm. in the mountain, and then I don't know. There was a time that that was really popular also, diba? That style. And then parang now it's more individualistic. Tama. No? For you didn't so when when you guys were coming up there was no I don't know were there other galleries doing like that old style also or Asa, meron pa rin meron pa rin mga nagbebenta ng ganun mga like for mga scenery ganun. Nung time kasi na yun, uh, sa akin uh, personally uh nung nagsimula ako magpaint ang ang gusto ko kasi yung parang yung, yung, yung kung paano ako magiging unique, kung paano ako hihiwalay. Kasi since may background kami sa advertising, alam namin na to uh, isang power na uh, isang one way to advertise a product na sa, sa tingin mo magiging successful siya is kung may something unique sa kanya, intriguing para sa mga consumers. Ganon din yung nangyari sa art namin. Ngayon, etong sa show namin na to, makikita nyo yung ano eh, yung Kumbaga, yung pagiging individual naming tatlong artist na iba-iba yung style namin na kumbaga for us uh, unique sa amin yun eh. Tingin ko yun na rin yung isang naging dahilan kung bakit naka kumbaga ewan ko kung nasa pintu kami ng ano ng art scene na or nakapasok na kami. Ayun. Oh, but you guys are doing it like full time, right? Yeah. Yun nga eh, ganun siya kasi gla sa Manila na hindi ko hindi ko magage kung ano eh kung nasa na kami ngayon pero yung kumbaga yung nilalabas naming art is enough to pambayad ng bills pambili ng art materials parang no it, it can be like uh, you can make a living yun oh. uh, kumbaga posible na siya ngayon sa sobrang kumbaga parang narinig ko nga pabata na pabata yung mga collectors so mas na mas lumalawak yung 
pangunawa nila sa art na hindi lang ito yung dat mong kolektahin kasi ito yung may pangalan, ito yung ito yung sisikat. Hindi na eh. Bumibili na sila ng art dahil gusto nila. Dahil nakaka-relate sila dun sa art na yun. So, so, malaking tulong yung ano eh. Pag naturuan mo yung mga tao, na yung mga rich kid, na mag-appreciate ng art and to let them know the value of it. Kung anong meaning nun. Hindi lang sa pagkukolek, hindi lang sa pag invest sa isang bagay. Siguro, one way yun to ano eh. Parang, to help the art scene. Mm. Yeah, because uh, that's why I want you guys here. Because I want a little insight also as to, you know, what it means to be an artist. Uh, that whole that whole idea, no? And then, I also noticed that, speaking of the art, ba, it, even like, uh, some of the local artists, they see, they, uh, there's a term for it, parang, it's like, they have an element that keeps showing up again. Like, for example, in your art, you have your character, ah, yung characters. Yeah. Why is that? Is that, um, would you know? Uh, well, Parang, it's one of the easiest way kasi to brand your paintings, eh. Mm. Like, you can do it, like, colors, pero you can only, all, you can only use as much colors. Parang, pwede siyang gamitin ng iba, eh. Pero if you have a character that you actually own, that's something na sa'yo. No, no one can try to copy it. Like, someone can copy your style or can co- copy how you paint. Pero if you have a character that you've been doing for so long and people associate you to that. I guess, pag yung, ako kasi personally, yung goal ko is to have a character that when people see it, regardless if I put my name on it or not, parang they would know who that is. So, yun yung goal ko with doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then it, it goes it goes back to that idea that I like that you guys mentioned. Nga. I don't know. There's this quote. It's like it's it's better to be different than good. Like you, if you're like twenty percent better, let's say going back to those farming paintings. No, so, so like there's so many people do that, and I'm sure there's like somebody who does it really really well. But if you're like twenty, if you do it. 10, 20% better than the person who's done it before. To a regular person like me, okay, it's, it's the same, diba? And then if you're, the way, I like the, I like that the, the approach now is just to be different, no? It's try to be, try, try to have an identity and I guess a level of putting yourself in the, the work because that's how you are different no so that's something that uh i think it's good that like you know you guys have really thought about that how to be in fact like if you just go as looking at your work there is a clear difference like i know when when your work ends and then it's it's yours and then it's yours you know and then just having that difference it might not be for everybody. You don't expect everybody to like it. But just having that difference means you're likely to find somebody who likes this particular thing. Uh, yun, kasi, like for me personally, yung goal ko is... Kasi not everyone will like your art. So like if, if there's one... like If I meet a person and then like he tells me na hindi niya talaga... Hindi niya feel yung art ko. Which is fine as long as na recognize niya na it's mine. Parang for me yun ang goal ko eh. Parang, ah, there's like an identity. Like yeah. you can tell, he can tell it's a Terence. Oh, I mean, he no, he doesn't necessarily like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parang but he when he saw it, parang ako oh, na I, I've achieved what I want to, wanted to achieve. Hmm. Do you guys have the same? Uh, is that something of a goal also for you guys? Ah, uh, yeah. Parang ano na lang eh. Parang naging automatic na lang siguro na since naghahanap ka ng sariling identity, uh, hindi lang naman siya yung one, hindi lang naman siya yung one way, pero yun yung naging way naming tatlo na magkaroon ng character, tapos pinangalanan pa namin. So, branded na branded talaga yung, kumaga sa amin na talaga yun. 
ayun, yung goal is to parang create pa more na characters, parang ganun. Para sa akin, para magkaroon ng Rins Universe, kumbaga. Ah, uh, yeah? Really? Uh, uh, bang, maaga pa naman. So, so ayun, na-start ko na yung character ko. May mga next pa na susunod. Hey, can we talk about, let's talk about that. Like, so, like, you're, so, I, I know, like, you have that, the um, yung ulala. Ay, ulala yung character ko. Oh, uh, Is that is that the only one right now? Ah, uh, ngayon meron na siyang pet si Duge. Sorry? <laughs> Duge, yung dog na pet niya. Meron ah, siyang pet. Yeah, na, uh, okay, so that also. Binigyan ko na siya ng companion. <laughs> <laughs> Para hindi na siya magisa. Tsaka ano rin eh, minsan uh, maganda rin yung may partner siya para hindi siya nag-iisa, parang. It's like constructing a story, no? Ayun, bali si isa rin uh, way para makwento ko yung ano, kasi yung kadalasan ng mga topic ng uh, painting so is uh, about childhood ganun mga uh, playtime ganun so si Ola la yung parang uh, siya na yung nagde-deliver ng message para sa akin kumbaga hindi ko na kailangan i-drawing yung sarili ko as bata ganun mas ano siya eh, mas mas free gawin tsaka mas mas wide yung pwede kong matakel na topic si Ola la obviously do it through the character Oh, through diba? the character. Oh. As opposed to, this is a reflection of my life. Tama, parang ganun. Oh. But some people do that. Some oh. people have that as their way of making art. No? How do you guys uh, approach your your characters? Uh, mine, so I have two characters now. So, yung pinakaginagamit ko is like the balloon. Mm. kind of resembles a rabbit. What's his so, name? Uh, it's Loon. Loon. Yeah, there, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, I think yung common question naman for me is why, bakit laging may iyak yung mga character. Mm. And yung explanation ko kasi for it is, remember pag bata ka, umiiyak ka, and then bibigyan ka ng mom mo ng balloon or ng ice cream. Oh yeah. So parang you're in that transition period when you're about to stop crying. So parang when I tell it, the pain, when I tell them kung ano yung background behind the paintings, it's actually, he used, he used to cry, but now, he's, he's, he's going to be happy. Parang nandun siya sa transition period. I'm very familiar with that because I have a child. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> we go to like, we yeah. go to mass. And then every time in the, uh, in mass, there's always somebody outside selling these yeah, little yeah. balloons. So every time, every time he sees it, so every week, yeah. yes, he wants a new balloon. Mm. So there are days where we're like, you know what, we're not getting you a balloon. Yeah. He'll cry and everything. Yeah. And yeah. then there are days that we give in. Okay. So he's crying, he's crying, and yeah, we give him the balloon. Yeah. And then... So yung, yung, fa- yung face na yun, <laughs> ng child, when, you know, na parang wet pa yung eyes niya, pero, oh, oh, he, He's going to be okay. So, parang, I guess, yun yung tinatry ko na i-capture na moment. And I just sort of cascaded it to all my paintings and applied it to different characters. Mm-hmm. How about you, Mr. S? Ah, bali yung character ko kasi. Uh, kaya Mr. S kasi yung meaning talaga uh, Mr. Sasquatch. Ah, okay. Baga Sasquatch talaga siya nung una. Kumbaga, hard, hard to find, is that? Uh, uh, is that what the Sasquatch is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kumbaga kasi dati, ano, street artist. Nag-try ako mag-street art. And then, parang yun yung napili kong uh, street name, Mr. S. So, paano ba nagsimula yun? Uh, wala, na-drawing ko lang siya. And then, yun na yung, yung napili kong ano talaga, character. And then, yung meaning kasi nung wala naman talaga siyang specific meaning para sa akin. Uh, more on, every time na magpipaint ako, more on ano talaga eh, uh, sa feeling. So, parang, pag nagpipaint ako, kung ano yung nararamdaman ko, yun yung pinipaint ko. Uh, tapos, ine-evolve ko lang yung itsura niya. Uh, mm. After ilang ano, Over the years. Over the years. But street yeah. art is a different, like, 
I feel like street art teaches you to do it like really fast, number yeah. one. And then also, you have, in a way, where I notice like a lot of these are like our local street artists, they have their characters. Mm. So if I see it on the road, parang, I know na, okay, I know it's, uh, let's say Bart Brothers. I know that they did it. Yeah. Now, even, even the Bart Brothers 2 guys. So I'll know if it's, uh, Jude, they're Jude and Joey. I'll know if it's a Jude <laughs> Bart Brothers and I'll know if it's a Joey Bart Brothers. So, but they also have their like, uh, their characters also, no? Mm. And then that's one way going back to just being different, no? So that one, your, oh, your, yeah. yung Sasquatch, he came from your street art. Yeah, yeah. That was yun. Um, wait, no. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Ah, uh, yun, usually kasi yung mga ginagawa ko, um, more on ano eh, na, pli, aesthetic siya. So, kung maganda siya sa mata ko, maganda yung composition niya, maganda yung kulay niya. Yun na yun, kumbaga, kung sino man yung tumingin sa art na yun, bahala na siya kung ano yung meaning na makukuha niya dun. So, yun. In this case, yung mga ginawa ko ngayon, parang, gusto kong i, ano yung feeling nung parang calm siya parang serene, parang ganun. So, ganun yung... For this particular exhibit, uh, yeah. sa yung camping trip. Yeah. Mm. Have you guys, uh, have you guys exhibited together before? No, no. This is the first time. But you guys knew each other already. Yeah. So, yeah. I, <laughs> before this exhibit, nagkakilala na kami. Ah. But you, but, uh, what I'm trying to ask is like, what's what's the community in Manila like? Do you have the like? Are the artists? Because I know here in Cebu, for example, like see Windel, like they live. They, 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 he basically lives in an art house. They're all like in the same house, somewhere up in the mountain, <laughs> and then I'll follow them on Instagram, and yeah, you know, they have a they wake up in the morning, they have a view, and yeah, then there's paint materials everywhere <laughs> no i don't know so what's what is what is it like uh like the community in uh manila i'm just trying to get a good sense uh, sa manila naman uh, since maraming ang gallery merong may mga set of artists yung mga gallery na yun so yung ma yung mga grupo na yun kumbaga may mga ano sila eh, may mga kanya-kanyang ano depende rin sa style eh. Uh, so like a gallery, they have if if you're so like a gallery has like a style sort of even at the um, gallery level. Yung hindi naman sa may style pero mapapansin mo yung kung yung kung ano yung madalas na na show dun sa gallery na yun. So yung bawat gallery may set of artists tapos yung mga artists na yun sila yung magkakagrupo pero magkakilala yung mga grupo na yun. Mm. Parang ganun din. Kung tutusan nga, maliit pa yung community na yun eh. Kasi magkakakilala lahat eh. Parang music din. Ah. Yes. Pa- parallel to a music industry. Parang yung gigs. Di ba mayroon lang naman yung specific locations? Like there's this bar, there's this bar. Pero somehow, some way, you see the same faces. And then, siguro yung familiarity lang like, kunwari, after seeing this guy for four times, parang one time kakausapin mo na lang siya, oh, you're here. Parang suddenly, magkakilala na kayo. Ah, uh, just because talking. of showing them. Yeah, yeah. Seeing them over parang, and over. Parang kil- kilala mo na siya by <laughs> face, eh. So, parang, <laughs> you, for me, ganun yung nangyari, eh. Parang, so, kunwari, I saw this guy for the first time. Hindi mo siya papansinin. Kasi, just basically strangers. And then, you go to different shows and then, parang nakasama mo na siya like seven times. So, when you actually bumped into him, you nod at each other and then you end up talking and then, you're, you're friends. Parang, parang tight din siya na community in a way. That's, that's interesting because, you know, like even here in Cebu, some, I'll meet people sometimes, let's say, going back to music. Yeah. So, 
I met this girl one time, and she said, like, "Yeah, there's so many." I, I kept saying, "I was saying to her, yeah, there's so many nice gigs now." Yeah. She was younger, and I was like, "You know, I, I can't." Uh, it's been a while since I've uh, watched a gig, just because you know I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> and then I don't have. Uh, I don't have the. I'm just not hanging out yeah, yeah, yeah. at night anymore in bars. Mm. But, but she was saying, "Yeah, but you know, after a while, you see the same uh, bands over and yeah. over again." But then I was, but hearing and then hearing you think, hearing you talk, made me think. But you know, my perception is Manila is so big. There's so many people there. Yeah. But even, but you were saying like in the music community and also in the yeah. art community, it's still small. And Co- that's more yeah, compared to the population of Manila, parang like one less than one percent lang I think. Oh, for sure. I mean, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> ah, so you, like. Are there like are there are there events or things when like artists come together? Uh, art fair. Yeah, art fair. Art fair, like an art fair? Yeah, yearly. Oh, is that an event? Is yes, that an yes, actual? Yeah. Ah, what is that? Can you what what is uh, art fair? Art fair, uh, ginaganap siya sa Makati, sa isang car park don na uh, t- parang tinatransform nila into Boots para sa mga galleries. It's a it's a it's a, it's a car park. It's a car park uh, na ilang level parang five levels sa tayo. Ah, okay. Ta- tapos um, magpaparticipate yung mga selected galleries. Tapos siguro sa isang gallery mga uh, minsan isa lang yung dala nilang artist. Minsan twenty uh, pataas. So isa yun sa mga ne konsan nagbimit yung mga artist na Uh, si Windle, last time nasa art fair siya. Kung baga, isang way yung art fair na mapa sa Cebu or sa malayong part ka ng Manila. Kahit international, like, dun, na, dun namin nami-meet yung isa't isa. Nakadalasan, hindi namin alam yung itsura nila. Tapos dun na namin nalalaman. Parang gano'n. Mm. So I feel like it's important that, you know, uh, the communities talk to each other. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. people, because you learn, like, uh, so, Sipia was telling me last night that uh, she organized like a quick, parang artist night thing. Yeah. So, she, you, guys, she, you guys got to meet some of the local artists here in Cebu. And then, uh, and then, she, even like the smallest, something like as small as, uh, I think they were asking, somebody was asking something like, oh, how do you, how do you make your artwork shine like oh. how, and then i thought that that Marika didn't when she, we were she, we were stuck outside and mm-hmm. we we're downstairs talking and then it occurred to me like okay shine i guess you know, whatever and then <laughs> then i went up here and then i looked at the work and then you could see in uh there really is parang like a a film of uh glass yeah there. yeah yeah <laughs> like um yeah it's like it's it yeah it, it It's a shine, yeah. <laughs> no. So thing, little things like that, you know, make a difference. And then yeah. not only that, but like also, how does? I was thinking about it in terms of like, if I'm if I'm an artist, I'm a new artist, and then I've never been to a gallery in my life. Malaking bagay yun. Oh, so how how do I know what to do? How do I know who to talk to? And then the only way to do stuff like that is by talking to other people in a community and by people sharing information, di ba? Tsaka isang, uh, nung nag-start akong mag, uh, magpinta-pinta, hindi ko pa, I have no idea paano makapunta sa gallery. Anong gallery ang pupuntahan ko? Ang alam ko lang, National Museum eh, sa Manila eh. Yung mga classic painting na... So, isa sa mga nagpayo sa akin, sabi, uh, attend shows uh, regularly. Somebody told you to do that. Uh, tapos, ayun niya, ma- eventually magiging familiar na sila sa'yo na lagi ka nandun. Tapos, ang nangyari kasi, ano, free beer, syempre. Na, <laughs> yeah. Na, In the openings. <laughs> uh, openings, syempre. Tsaka pagkain. Uh, minsan, pag umiinom ka na, lumalakas na yung loob mo kung sino-sino na kinakausap mo. Uh, personal story <laughs> Uh, minsan nakakausap mo na yung mga tamang tao na magpapasok sa'yo dun sa gallery na yun. Uh, 
uh, pwedeng ano, yung artist na nagsho-show na doon, tapos pag nakilala ka niya, nalaman niya yung works mo, i-invite ka niya sa isang group show. Tapos, mm. sa... how did he know that, uh, like, how did, like, ikaw, did you, were you showing your work somehow? Like, I don't know, posting it on social media? Ah, or... nasa, nasa social media na yung mga works ko noon, kumbaga, hindi pa, hindi pa siya career noon, parang hobby pa lang noon. Ah. Uh, hobby after work pa. Tapos, ano kasi yung artwork ko eh, naka, ano ba yun, naka wallpaper sa cellphone ko eh. So, ah, so you can just show you. <laughs> wala, ka, wala ka ng hang time na yung dull moments na, ay, sandali, i-search ko lang sa gallery ko. <laughs> yun yung ano eh, yun yung isang technique na tinuturo ko sa mga nagtatanong sa akin na, pa- pa- paano mo ipapakita? Hindi ba awkward na, ano, parang gano'n. Gawin mong wallpaper, isang click, eto yung works ko. Ito yung isang sample ng works ko. Then, kung dun pa lang naging interested na sila, uh, pwede ka nang ma-invite sa mga ganyan, mga ganun. And then also, yeah, if you're also post, I also kind of like, you can give them, I guess, uh, like an Instagram handle or something. And then they can they can check and then they can, in a way, they will judge the work without you around. Nah. So, <laughs> walang, <laughs> di ba? Wala na yung mga uh, awkward moments na, oh, ang ganda. Ayos na. <laughs> Ayun, y- y- yun yung ano, yun yung isa sa mga natutunan ko rin. Tapos, nung pagtagal-tagal na na ma-attend ako, nalaman ko na kung sino yung nagmamanage ng gallery. Uh, nilalapitan ko na ganun. Uh, ayun, dinidiretso ako na kasi for sure ayaw din nilang masayang yung oras nila. Diretsahin mo na kung anong gusto mong sabihin. Ha? Paano ba ako makakapag-show dito? Ano bang kailangan kong gawin? Pag sinabi nilang, ano, email mo sa amin yung gawa mo, huwag mong gawin yun. Puntahan mo sila sa mga days na walang show. Uh, magdala ka ng portfolio, ganun. Pakita mo personally para... Kasi pag email, ewan ko, hindi na ganun ka-powerful ang email ngayon sa... It's easy to ignore email. Easy to ignore, tama, o. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if you're in front of them showing you the the work, your portfolio, or do you call it profo- portfolio? Portfolio. Right? Okay, portfolio. Even if it's art, no, you show them the portfolio, and then they have no choice but to pay uh, attention. Chaka as much as possible. Kung ano na rin eh, self ano na rin eh, parang self check mo na rin kung okay na ba yung gawa mo, kung mm. feel mo na yun eh, bakas yung Basta, o, basta tingin mo okay na yung quality ng gawa mo, nasasabi mo na yung gusto mong sabihin, may something unique sa gawa mo. Yun na yung, ano eh, siguro, nakalimutan ko lang sabihin, pero yun yung una mong dapat uh, gawin. Uh, improve mo yung skill mo. Ganun. Oh, syempre. Learn, eh. <laughs> learn from others. Bago mo gawin yung mga sinabi ko. Ah, oh, yeah, because if if I go to, <laughs> if I, <laughs> if I'm the one who goes to Cube and says, hey, I want to exhibit, no, that doesn't make sense. No, I, I get it. Like, you have to be good. And But I think also there, there is a point when you have to decide that you are good enough. Kasi yeah, yeah, tricky yung, ano na yun, eh. Tricky yun. Yeah. So at least on the musician side, like, it's very easy to be a bedroom musician. Yeah. You can have like really good tracks, but you've never played in front of anybody. Ibang feels yung ano eh, pag ibang field na yun eh. Yeah, no, you can be really good. Like I, I know guitars were like super good, like a much better than me, for example. But you put them in front of people, and then yeah, well, Anna, it's it's different. Sa art naman, uh, pwedeng sobrang galing mong kumopya. No, that pero wala ka pang identity. Wala din. Going back to being different. Uh, sobrang importante. Ewan ko. Si- sobrang importante na eh. Yung identity. Mm. Tsaka siguro hindi lang sa... Yung kami, character-based yung gawa namin. Si- for sure, hindi lang yun yung way eh. Siguro kung ano na rin yung meaning ng gawa mo. Anong pinaglalaban mo as an artist. Mahalaga rin yun eh. Well, yeah, I was thinking... Like when you guys were talking, I was thinking, let's say, I'm not... I'm not super familiar with art, no? But, like, let's say, uh, the person I was thinking about was he Banksy. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he has a character. I mean, he uh, has a character, but they're one-offs. Like, that, they're, they're doing the same thing. Girl with... Balloons. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I forgot what it was. <laughs> but, yeah. But it. But he doesn't have, like, a, a character doing different things, diba? 
but you kind of know it's him. Si Banks. For me, kasi si Banks, si iba yung ginawa niya to be different, eh. Parang, he went to play, parang, parang lahat ng stunts niya. Uh. Parang it takes a lot of guts na, uh, ay, parang, hindi siya for everyone. Like, that's, I guess that's part of the reason why, kasi pag college ka, di ba, parang gusto mong maging street artist. Yun yung kasi yung cool, eh. And then What? One, Sorry? Pag, state artist? Street artist. Street artist. Yeah, yeah. Kasi ah, okay. yun yung cool, di ba? Tapos pag uh, tinaray mo na, <laughs> parang may spray can ka, tapos you walk down the streets, para, dun, dun mo na mas, may kita, eh. Kung sino yung, ano, parang sino yung takot talaga. And then you just go home and <laughs> end up not doing it. So, I guess, yung gina- pinush niya talaga yung boundary boundary na eh. like he went to museums pinaltan niya yung mga artwork sa museums yeah, he had that one where it was an auction and then yeah. it just self destructed oh. yeah, even before that even ibang klase yung mga stunts na ginawa niya eh. so i guess yun yung naging identity niya not necessarily kung ano yung itsura ng art niya but That's more true. of what he did with it mm. how did um Uh, you you told me how you first got into an exhibit. How did you guys? Ah, okay. I know. Oh, say the start. Yung sa akin naman. That's in funny because I actually emailed. Nig email ako sa VOV like less less than a year from now, and I just wanted to similar sinabi ni Rin. Parang there would come a point because pagandaan mo ng paintings and parang parang okay naman sa akin pero parang mo malalaman kung okay na talaga siya so kinumpail ko siyang lahat and then in-email ko siya sa mga gallery just to, kasi at least doon ko makikita if hindi nag-respond ah, ba hindi pa ba hindi pa siya okay so in-email ko siya sa mga gallery then fortunately enough for me nag-reply yung VOV so from there doon ko na siya na-develop so pinakita ko and then they had something to say about it may mga work na kailangan ayusin. So, from there, I just build on it and then, yun, now. So, I'm very grateful for that opportunity. How about, how about you, by Mr. S? <laughs> uh, how did you, diba, you, oh, sorry, yeah, you mentioned that you're, you had a girlfriend and she was, I, she was, she worked for the exhibit and then, but somehow yeah. you were able to get a show there. But, you know, you didn't get it purely as the connection from your girlfriend. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. sure that Whoever was in charge of the exhibit still had to vet you through a process. Ah, uh, siguro ano? Uh, before kasi ako magshow, may Instagram account na ako nung mga works ko. Oh, because you're a street artist. So from there, medyo nagage ko na na, medyo marami kasi siyang like. So parang dun ko ginage yung ano. Mm. yung confidence ka na mag-show. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, gino ko na. <laughs> so, may currency yung Lex. <laughs> uh, okay, parang, nung time na yun, parang, ba, parang daming ano ah, daming may gusto na ito ah. Sige, try ko nga i-show. So, so y- y- ganun siya nag-start. So. And that's where you got the confidence to really <laughs> get to it. Did you, do you guys have your own stories on when you decided to you know, to, uh, to, to, to make that switch and be a full-time artist. It's like me, I mentioned going back, being a musician, that that was something that I would daydream about but never really, you know, never really pursued. No, Do you guys have your own moments of when, like, okay, I'm going to do this. And then, like, it's obviously... When you make that decision, it's it's a th- you're at that moment of like you don't know if it's gonna work, but you're gonna do it anyway, diba? Or was it like a slow? Because this is a, this is a different story where it's a slow build, and then you're like, you know what? I'll just quit my job. I'm making good money already, doing this other thing that I like. Ako when nung nag switch ako bigla. Um nagtatrabaho ako sa ano nun eh. Uh, okay lang ba magsabi ng... Um, Whatever. Doesn't matter. Nagtatrabaho ako nun sa... Ah, hindi. Ayaw ko pala. Nagtatrabaho ako sa isang ad agency. And then... Uh, um, yung... Basta hindi ako masaya sa salary nun eh. As in, yung salary ko nun. As in, pamasahe lang. Commute lang. 
Tapos wala talaga ako naiipon and shit. Yeah. Tapos biglang, yun nga, naisip ko na, ba't di na lang kaya ako mag, ano, mag-art-art? Tapos kinausap ko yung parents ko, ganyan. Kung gusto mo talaga, edi, go. Wala akong ipon nun as in, biglang, biglang nag-quit na lang ako. Sabi ko, ah, sir, ay- ayoko na. Tapos sabi nila, ano, mag-stay pa daw ako ng for one month, pero hindi na ako bumalik. <laughs> Para oh, yeah. nag-awal na ako, as in, diretso na. Diretso. So, yun. So, what, what may, ah, so you were just frustrated. You were yeah, just frustrated yeah. with uh, your status yeah. quo at the time. Yeah. Uh, parang hindi kasi ako na fulfill doon sa ginagawa ko eh. So, naghahanap ako ng ibang way na para sumaya. So, freeing siya in a way. So, ah, like, yeah, yeah. It, it was, we could finally just focus on this thing that you wanted yeah, to do. Na sa tingin ko naman, para sa sarili ko na kaya ko naman gawin, meron naman akong skill na para magawa ko siya. So, Mm. So, yeah. oh, do, do you guys have your own? Uh, well, for me naman, I guess yung moment na talagang uh, na-realize ko. So, so okay. Parang okay kasi yung, yun din yung risk ko eh when I was leaving. Parang okay naman ako sa job. Like, in terms of financial support ng company and everything else. Parang okay naman. Safe na talaga siya for me. Pero there, there was a time kasi na uh, client kasi namin this sa fast food na chain. Tapos mm-hmm. we were doing Facebook posts na parang sobrang naka, parang six revisions na parang sa halo-halo. Like change the word. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> parang, parang like... can we make the nata de coco bigger? Ma? Ah, <laughs> parang, okay. Parang <laughs> ser- seryoso pa to. It, 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 was, it was during the time na was painting na... Ju- nagbe-paint na ako sa gabi. So, parang meron na akong comparison kung ano yung feel ko towards the two types of work that I'm doing. So, at night, I would paint, listen to music, parang sobrang sobrang saya, and then I would go next day to my work, tapos getting these emails from the client na parang hindi pa malaki yung natad ko ko enough <laughs> for a Facebook post na ano pa siya? Like, it, kasi sa Facebook post ng mga brands, parang merong mga binuboost. So, which means may funding. Kunwari, bibigyan siya ng 100K ng brand para to advertise, to advertise. for parang, more people. Ito, wala. It was just like a hygiene content na... Uh, this was like the regular yeah, in-between oh, posts. Na parang I'm sure, sure would get like 8 likes at the end of the day. Uh, so, parang it was just too much for me. So, I guess yun... And then... Parang yun na yung moment ko na, okay, can I, let me see my bank. Is this enough? So parang okay, sige. Ah, so you weren't making money yet from painting? I wasn't, I wasn't. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So you were like, mm. so you were thinking. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh. You were thinking mm. that uh, I have enough saved. Uh, it will last me, let's say, six months. Yeah. And then, you know, worst case. I can go back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah, but like, that was the worst case yeah, scenario. Yeah. Actually, you. you know, man, you know, man, in my head, oh, I, I would quit. Tapos parang, I would, I have enough to, nang walang, let's say, worst case, I paint. That's why I'm may bili. Pwede, like, pwede siya for six months to a year. And if, and if wala talaga, then, I'd go back. At least, I tried. Parang, okay, nagawa ko na siya. It's not for me. Parang ganun. So, yun, nandun ako now. So, fortunately, okay naman siya. Mukhang, mukhang di ako babalik. So, parang, hmm. so, so, how about you, Rin? Ah, ano rin eh, uh, pareho kami ni Mr. S. Uh, team Awol kami eh. Team Awol. <laughs> Nag-Awol din ako nun eh. <laughs> Uh, hindi ko na hindi ko na kinuha yung salary ko noon eh kasi nagawali nga ako eh kasi nung time na yun uh, nagbebenta na ako ng painting sa streets of uh, BGC sa May Tagig Really you were uh, just wait so you were just standing on the street I mean ano like... sila may mga parang monthly event sila 
na pwede nga magbenta ng crafts. Pero ako, nagbebenta ako ng mga paperworks, paintings, yun. Ah, oh, really? Mm. Oh, okay. Ah, so it's an event. Like an event. Parang event, oh. okay. Monthly siya. Mm. So, sa two to three days na pag event ko dun, yung sahod ko na kinikita ko sa work, mas malaki pa yung kinikita ko dun. Ah, oh, really? <laughs> two to three days, ah. So, nung time na pumapasok pa ako regularly, uh, minsan, lahat na ng sakit ginamit ko para lang makapagpinta ako. Mag- sir, uh, sir, LBM, sir, uh, sir, nihilo ako, sir. <laughs> Kasi minsan, pag umaga, doon ako, ano, morning person ako eh. Doon ako ganado magpinta. So, nung time na nag, nag, nagsawa na ako mag-reply ng kung ano-ano sa boss ko para lang makapag-absent, gano'n. Nag, nag uh, message na lang ako na sir I quit po. Na w- walang thinking na kasi wala akong pera noon eh. Wala pa akong wala may parating na event kasi nagpipinta ako noon. So inisip ko na ano sugal na to. Pag nabenta to may enough ako for one month. <laughs> Tas event yung BGC na event yung Ayun sa BGC na ah, event. Okay, okay. Tas yung yung event na yun nakakuha ako ng mga commissions na nang extend pa ng confidence ko na ah tuloy-tuloy ko na to y- yung yung time na yun wala pa akong idea sa mga galleries ah really wala pa wala pa so thought like you just be doing the BGC oh, event oh BGC na event na doon din nag-start yung si Olala eh yung work ko na Olala ah um, nakakatawa nga noon eh nag-start kasi yung sculpture ko ah uh, yung pinagkwitan ko pala na work is uh, sculptural work siya so sobrang baba ng sound malayo sa mga ano yung mga kunwari sa advertising, sa malayong-malayo. Uh, doon nag-start yung... Kasi nagbebenta ko ng mga paintings, malalaking paintings. So, may mga araw na isa lang nabebenta, which is enough na rin malaking bagay. Pero, hindi niya nakocover yung mga pang... Uh, pang transpo, pang pagkain. Kung maga, naisipan ko na gumawa ng mga small... Uh, items, artworks na pwedeng ibenta na smaller uh, smaller price. Doon ko nagawa yung si Olala. Yung mga ulo. Ulo pa lang siya dati. Ah, not yet the full on full body o oh. action figure. Ah, hindi pa, hindi pa. <laughs> Ta- tapos, uh, siguro yung span ng pagbebenta ko sa BGC naka ano ako, parang 300 pieces na heads. You made 300 pieces? Uh, Or you sold I, 300 pieces? Oo, uh, I sold 300 pieces. Oh, really? Nung yung, kumbaga yung, yung tagal ko ng pagbebenta doon. Siguro so, mga naka-ano ako, mga naka-5 to 6 events ako. Mm, Ganun so karami. So these were just like, just the heads? Heads. So purely as an art piece? No, ang, like... Ang, ang ano pa nga eh, syempre yung ibang tao nakakita ng ganong small na artwork. Ah, magkano tong paperweight na to? Oh. <laughs> ah, so, I was gonna say, like, so it, it wasn't the keychain. It Ay, wasn't, de, de. Yeah, ano no. lang siya, parang, uh, parang pambato nga eh, pampukol sa ulo, parang gano'n. Uh, oh, well, okay. Pero ano siya, ganyan na siya na may design yung mukha, may mga symbols, yes. gano'n. Tsaka unique siya. Each, each piece. Uh, bin- nag-start ako magbenta nun for, ano, 250, 250 pesos. Binita ko siya ng gano'n. Tapos, uh, ayun, nag- Uh, tas nung sa BGC na rin, may mga na-meet na rin ako ng mga collectors din. Na isang way na rin na nagpakilala sa akin sa mga galleries. Tapos, nagbigay rin sa akin ng commissions na paintings. Uy, gawan mo kami ng ganito. Tapos, mga sculptural projects na rin. So, parang hindi na rin talaga sulit yung pagpasok ko eh. Kasi, uh, ayun niya, nakaka-stress talaga kasi hindi mo na gusto yung ginagawa mo. Kumbaga, ang pinaka-problema ko yung traffic tsaka yung revisions. Na, lalong mahirap sa akin kasi sculpture yung ginagawa ko. Revis- ang mga sample na revision doon, ah, medyo, ano, liitan mo. Pag nilitan mo yung sculpture, buong sculpture na yung lilitan. <laughs> yeah. So, yung... Sa akin naman walang problema kasi gusto ko naman yung ginagawa ko. Yun nga lang yung stress na ang ganda rin ito ha. Tapos na ito ha. Parang ganun. So, ayun. Nag- And like, parang like small difference lang. What kind of sculptures were you making at work? Akong familiar ka sa uh, ano siya, yung mga angels. Parang ganun. Mga angels. Uh, kaya, 
mga ano siya, mga bata. So, kung mapapansin mo yung sculpture ko, medyo influence din doon. Mm. Kaya nga, tingin ko, importante din na ma-experience mo yung mga struggles bilang isang empleyado. Kasi may mga matututunan kang uh, etiquettes, mga kung paano makipag-deal sa tao. Siguro kung di namin nadaanan lahat yun, baka ibang ibang ugali rin namin yun eh. Tsaka iba rin yung, nabitbit ko rin naman yung pagiging, uh, kumbaga, yung professionalism. Kasi bitbit mo na yung sarili mo eh. Yung pangalan mo na yung brand eh. Ayun. Yeah, but also like, uh, one of, one, well, like ako, for example, you know, I work on a, I just on my, I'm on my computer when I work. I don't need to go into an office. Home base. Yeah, I can do really what I can, you know, I can go to a cafe after nice. here and I get started by work. <laughs> But the the irony of uh working for yourself is that at first you 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 decide you work for yourself because you know, I don't need to go to a nine to five. Yeah. But then you soon realize that you need to set a schedule yeah. for your work. <laughs> Your own version of a nine to five, and then now there's nobody texting you, no boss saying where are you. Now it's just your own conscience. Pero ngayon I tend to ano na eh, parang yung hindi na uso sa akin yung eight working hours eh. Parang hangat kaya ko na eh. Mm, yeah, that's the other. Th- well, that's the nice thing. If you're passionate about what you do, <laughs> yeah. you can easily eight hours is nothing if you're yeah. passionate about it, di ba? So. Yeah, it's not hard to work in that sense. Sobra. So, uh, yun yan, swerte namin talaga eh, na may, may struggles pa rin, for sure, panigurado. Pero, ano siya eh, parang masaya eh. Yeah. Tsaka nakabunta kami ng Cebu dahil sa art namin. <laughs> Is it your first time here? First yes. time. All three of you? Oh, okay. Well, I hope you're not just stuck in this little stretch of road the whole uh, uh, time. Mamaya siguro or tomorrow. Uh, punta kami kay Windel mamaya. Ah, okay. Um, Dito sa Busay. Uh. I think. Ah, okay. Yeah. We, we visit namin yung kinikwento mo kanina na view. Yun, uh, what do they call it? Asylum de Busay. Asylum. Uh. Oh, yun. Yeah, I, I haven't been there. So, it should be good. Any, but, uh, uh, We're already here for like an hour, <sighs> no? But can we talk briefly about the yung camping trip? So what's the what are the like the the different works that you guys brought? What's the overall theme? Um, ang sa pagkakaintindi ko. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, ano kami uh, mga Manila artist na dumayo sa Cebu para ipakita yung mga works namin. Kung baka kinonsider na rin namin siya na parang camping trip. Kasi lahat kami, may dala kaming mga toys, mga sculptures. So, yung mga characters namin, kung baka parang nag-camping trip sa Cebu to experience Cebu, parang gano'n. Ah, so that's like the concept of no, it. The concept. Kasi yung una nag-iisip kami, kasi magta-travel kami yung tatlo. Tapos mm. first time namin, sa isang unknown place, kumbaga. Ayun, parang camping trip. Nag, <laughs> nag, nag-trip kami dito sa, sa Cebu. <laughs> Have you guys exhibited outside of Manila before? Uh, international. Oh, Pero yeah? yung mga works lang namin. Uh, si, you send it lang. Ay, si Mr. S. Oh, sa Taiwan sa Kaohsiung so oh, ah yeah? yeah parang art Kaohsiung art fair din siya how does that usually work like so they don't i guess they don't fly you in or do they fly you in they flew you in uh, nung time ko uh, naggumastos ako para pumunta doon ah, okay. for me parang ano na rin siya worth it uh vacation na rin kumbaga so yun mm but how does that work so how do these like I assume these are also galleries. Yeah, same sa art fair Philippines. Ah, so a gallery sent you from a gallery yeah, from Nova Manila. Gallery, yeah. Ah, okay. So that's how you you show like how how this is that how it usually works for artists? They get sent to like an a, an art uh, show through the galleries. Ah, uh, actually, katulad nyo rin. Uh, 
may isang gallery na nagpre-represent sa akin, vinyl and vinyl hmm. sa Makati. Uh, sila yung, kumbaga, naghahanap sila ng mga events internationally. Mga art fairs, ganun. Uh, Tapos, yun, uh, tatanungin ka nila kung gusto mong sumali, ganun. Eh, Siyempre, sali, international. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, the, so, the gallery is the one who tells you? Uh, ina- uh, parang in-update ka nila. Oh, meron tayong uh, magandang show para sa'yo. Magandang exposure to, ganun. Uh-huh. Tapos, si- ay- ayun, yun yung, yun yung pinaka-work ng gallery na, ano, maghanapan ng projects yung artist. Tsaka, yeah. yun, shows. Do you see, like, a difference with how people perceive uh, your art from... Have you... No, but, like, in the international shows, you're not really there, no? No. Uh, like, like, ikaw, Miss uh, Japo, like, uh, when, you were, when you went to tai, Taiwan, was it Taiwan? Kaohsiung? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, when you were there, I don't know, because... So I've been I've been invited sometimes like here in Cube we'll do an exhibit and then I'm always very timid as a as a person who visits because I'm always scared to ask somebody about their work about the specificity of it because like I'm not sure I'm very self conscious about <laughs> you know I, I don't want to talk like I know what I'm talking about but <laughs> So sometimes, sometimes like I look at something, I'll be like, eh, "It's it's nice," <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know what else to say. But um, so I'm just trying to get like, do, for example, when you were in Taiwan, did you get to talk to people? Actually, ano eh, hindi. Wala wala naman masadong nagtatanong about sa art. But sometimes when you are in exhibits, people really ask you about certain yeah. pieces, no? Madalang eh. Actually, for, for, ah, uh, in my case, madalang magtanong yung tao sa akin about my work, so. Mm. Okay, I'm just curious because, like, I was, but how about you guys? They, do people ask or? In my case, naman, like, uh, unlike these guys, hindi pa ako nakapag exhibit abroad sa gallery. Pero I had the chance to do a show sa Japan, pero it, it was in a cafe. Mm. So, uh, hindi siya formal na show like this one. Yeah. Pero, I guess, yung, con- yung parang pro naman nun is, it was so intimate na open yung mga tao. I, I was telling them kahapon, parang iba talaga yung value ng art sa kanila. I mean, ma- money-wise. Kasi I was, I was selling stickers here for 20 pesos. Tapos, so I brought that there sa show dun sa Japan. Tapos, when I told yung host na, okay, I wanna sell this, it's for 40 yen. So, 20 pesos. Oh, but I, think, but I yeah. guess that's really like even smaller yeah, to yeah. them, di ba? Oh, oh, kasi parang for me, that's fair. Kasi oh. parang dito, pag tinasan mo ng 20, parang snooty na yung mga tao eh. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, parang, okay, sige, benta ko ng 40 yen dun. Tapos, parang sobrang na-shock siya. So, parang, ha, bakit? Why 40 yen? So cheap. So parang, okay, so I asked him, how much would you think na mabibenta ko to? And then he said, parang halos 300 yen. So it's 150 pesos per sticker. So parang ako, skeptic pa ako. Shit, mahal pa ako lang pili. <laughs> and then, na, nag, na, na, nag-open na yung show dun sa cafe. So na-sold out yung ano, yung stickers. But you know, that could also be, uh, that could just mean that their money is worth oh, a lot I, more. Yun. You know, when you buy a burger, <laughs> when you buy a Big Mac in the <laughs> Philippines. <laughs> so, yeah. so, I guess, mostly yun yun, yung parang the fact na first world country sila. Pero parang ang nakabenta ng painting eh. Ang <laughs> sticker. Parang yung set mo ng sticker pagkatapos parang nakabenta ng painting. So parang, oh, pwede eh. Okay. Uh, no, but yeah, there's it. I think the, I'm pretty sure, especially like first world, first world, first world, like these, yeah, first world countries. I'm sure that they just they value art differently. I feel because here, you know, I don't know. I I I still think of the Philippines sometimes. So sometimes you're just scrounging, you know, you're just trying to get by, yeah. no, and a lot of people are anyway, no, and then. When you're when you're just having difficulty getting by, it's hard to think about art. 
No? So I wonder if that's what it is. Except if you're in China, then they won't they don't give a shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, um, guys, thanks so much for uh, humoring me with this interview. Where can you? Where can Rian? You can start. Where can people find you on the internet? I'm as active on Instagram uh, at reerasart r e e r u s t a r t. I'll put everything in the show notes so uh, yes, people yes, can yes. check. Uh, for me, just search uh, T R N Z on Instagram. Oh, um, Mr. Underso- underscore Sasquatch. All right. In Instagram also. Instagram also. Okay. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that episode. I was, just, I was really listening to it and it really made me want to, at some point, have one on one conversations with those guys. Maybe one of these days. Maybe I'll have like a Manila leg. I'll go to Manila and uh, look for people to interview there. That should be pretty interesting. And um, yeah, maybe because I, I know that a lot of people think of 032 and they think it's, you know, representing Cebu and everything. But the truth is I want 032 conversations in particular to basically share stories from the creative community. And in that community is frankly bigger than Cebu. It's bigger than the Philippines. So, yeah, it's uh, interesting to have these conversations. I'm, I'm happy for the podcast to open these doors to people I've never met, people I've never heard of. And, uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm going to keep doing this. And uh, I hope you guys keep listening. Again, thanks Cube Gallery and Advenient for sponsoring the podcast. The music from this podcast is Piano March by Audionautics. If you're still listening to this point, thank you so much. And if you want, if you feel like I've given, if you feel like there's value in this podcast, if you feel like you've gotten so much out of it and you want to give back, there's a couple of ways to do so. You can become a Patreon subscriber. If you just head on over to patreon.com slash 032 Z-E-R-O-T-H-R-E-E-T-W-O then you can look at all the details on how to become a Patreon subscriber you can buy 032 merchandise at the assembly online assembly.032.com you can share this episode on social media sharing the episode really does wonders and and get and helps us get more listeners and we need that the more people we can get listening to this podcast the better i feel you know i feel like more people will learn from it the creative community learns from it the creative community becomes better in general and the fourth way is you could leave a rating on itunes just tell itunes that you like the show oh also you can subscribe to the newsletter if you haven't yet if you don't know i one of my favorite things to write every week is uh, is my email newsletter called Monday Musings. It's basically thoughts that I had, articles that I found interesting, or videos that I found interesting, or quotes I'm thinking about, etc. Basically, random stuff that I found interesting that week that I thought were worth sharing. You can sign up on the website. Just head on over to 032.com slash Monday. See you next Tuesday.